Hello everyone, Waldosis here for another Maker Mash Nations video, bringing you your daily dose of death traps. Today we're doing our first trap deep dive, where we'll be breaking down specific trap uses, combinations with other traps, mods and more. In this video, we'll be starting with some humble beginnings, looking at the cheapest trap in the game that also happens to be one of my top three traps for actually getting kills, the Impaler. As always, if you do enjoy the video, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe as it really helps me out growing this channel so I can bring you even more Meet Your Maker content. Without any further ado, let's get into it. The Impaler is one of two traps that are unlocked automatically upon starting the game, the other being the Bolt Trap. It is a short range, relatively quick triggering trap that covers a single cube area directly in front of its location. The Impaler's relatively quick activation speed makes it a very powerful tool for punishing players who hesitate or make mistakes when running your outpost. As with most traps however, you are able to run past Impalers at the standard run speed, so you want to make sure that you get creative with positioning or use traps and guards to mask the notification to help the trap catch players unaware. As mentioned, the Impaler trap shines as a punishment trap, which can be used to catch people out when they make mistakes or approach scenarios faster than they should. You can also use them in choke points where other threats are visible to the player to catch them as they assess the room ahead of them. Personally speaking, I like to use them to catch players out who try to retrieve ammo after killing a guard, or are preoccupied trying to avoid a different, more obvious trap. More than any other trap in the game, impalers are all about catching people unaware, so you want to make sure that you hide them in the right places to get the most out of them. So let's talk about positioning. Impalers are extremely close range, and as such it's very easy for them to be picked off at that range very safely, like the majority of traps can be. So you should never use them in locations that they can be easily seen in. In particular, impalers on walls are very easy to spot, so I would normally recommend using them on floors and ceilings rather than on side walls of corridors for example. Look for places where you can reduce the visibility of the impaler on approach, so just placing them on ramps sloping away from the player, which also has the benefit of making the notification come from behind them when it gets triggered. Consider adding them on the roof above blind corners, or behind a wall that the player can't see round. Using them in combination with changes in height is also very effective, as they become much more harder to see as the height adjusts. Proximity to the player required for good use of Impaler means you should make concealing them on approach your number one priority in terms of choosing where you put them. My preferred approach to selecting an Impaler position is to run through my outpost and make a note of all the walls that can't be seen until you're in front of them. Then I'll watch some run replays of the outpost and look for places where raiders stall to assess an upcoming room or corridor. Where these two different areas overlap is where your Impaler should go as this will force the raider to either enter a room that they're not prepared for, or back up into the trap which will then catch them. So let's talk about mods, and first of all we're going to look at Unrelenting. The Unrelenting mod lets an Impaler repeatedly activate, which is actually a really good tool for slowing down speedrunners, or catching out people who trigger the trap but don't destroy it, which is quite a common thing for people to do with these close range traps because they're moving away from them relatively quickly. One of my favourite things to do with this is to place unrelenting impalers on platforms that guards are standing on, because players will jump onto it to kill the guard, thus triggering in the first instance the trap, but then jump back up to grab anything like synthite or parts that have been dropped, which in turn will trigger the second hit, which I found really catches people out. So Second Wave is a universal mod that appears for most traps, and it's really, really simple, there isn't really much to talk about with it. It simply hides the trap until your genmat is taken, allowing it to be used in phase 2 of your outpost. The usage remains exactly the same as the standard impaler, but take into account that people who will come across second phases will be running in the opposite direction. So take the positioning tips and reverse it round so that you're running your base in reverse when you're deciding where to put your second phase impalers. So self-destruct, actually this is one of my personal favourites. Self-destruct does exactly what it says on the tin, and I think impalers are the best trap to use this mod with. Use of it is very similar to unrelenting, however bear in mind the explosion radius is actually slightly larger than a re-triggering of the trap hitting the nearby cubes. In terms of use cases, self-destruct is generally better for catching out slow players rather than slowing down fast players, which unrelenting is better at. So watch your replays and pick the appropriate one of these based on who is commonly running your outpost. 
And finally we have Blockade. This causes the spikes to stay out and create a hazard area. This isn't overly useful, but you can utilize it in blind corners to stop speedrunners. The idea of this is a player will run past the impaler, see an upcoming trap, and then step back into the spikes, which are out longer than they would normally be accounting for. Now, whilst the spikes are out in this way, they do not cause damage, but they stop the player from passing through them, meaning that they'll get caught by whatever trap they're trying to avoid. However, I find in most cases where blockade is useful, unrelenting does the same job a little bit better. So let's talk about how you can use the Impaler in combination with some other traps to create some cool combinations. So firstly we've got the Hollow Cube Drop. Coming in at number 1, it's my single highest kill trap combination. For those of you who have seen my 5 quick and cheap trap videos, you'll recognise this one as one of the traps that I showed in that video, but with a slight alteration. So for this trap, create a single cube drop in your floor and place a Hollow Cube in the hole. Then. On a ceiling that is one block higher, place the Impaler. When a player is running through here, they'll instinctively jump when they fall into the hole, which causes them to jump out into the Impaler. For maximum efficiency, however, make sure to use multiple of these in your outpost, but with some of them, place the Impaler in the pit. This means that raiders will have to guess whether they have to jump or whether they have to fall into the hole to survive. And for 45 capacity, you're not getting anything that will get you more kills than this. So for number two, we have the Guard Platform Trap. As mentioned, one of my favourite ways to use Impalers is to trap Guard Platforms. So here's an example of how to set up this particular trap, because there are a few considerations you want to make depending on how you're going to use this. So first of all, make sure the platforms that you're using this on are against a wall to stop things like Synthite and Parts from falling off the platform as often. Then place your Impaler Trap and place an Enforcer on top of it. This can be really effective because as someone goes to kill the Enforcer, the Enforcer's damage icon is coming from the same place as the Impaler, making it really easy to miss. You can also double down on this by putting in an Unrelenting Impaler, which means that when the person has killed the guard and backs away from the trap, if they jump back up to grab something like Synthite and Parts, the Impaler trap will trigger again and thus catch them out. Number three is the Blind Corner Trap. Impalers in blind corners are really powerful, so here is a quick setup that you can use going into a blind corner using an unrelenting or a blockade impaler. So you start off by having a 90 degree angled corridor, and at the far side of the exit corridor, you place either a bolt trap, an incinerator, or some trap that's going to cause the player to back away from it. Then, one square before you get to the actual corner, place an impaler on the ceiling. If someone is running around the corner, they will see the trap firing at them from the far end and back into the entrance they've just come from, meaning that the Impaler will catch them out as they back away. If the Raider doesn't back into the Impaler, they then have to parry the bolts or use up their Arc Shield, which means you're forcing them to use up their defensive options, meaning the next corridor can pressure them a little bit harder. number four is the Grapple Impaler. This trap has already become a classic in many outposts that I've seen and can be really effective for its price. Start by creating a one cube deep hole in either a ceiling or a wall. Then on the opposite surface to the opening, place a Grapple Trap. Then place the Impaler on the least visible surface. The Grapple will fire, grab the player and pull them into the Impaler. If the Grapple is successful, the Raider has to prioritize destroying the Impaler before they destroy the Grapple otherwise they get impaled before they can break free. You also can hide this entire setup behind a hollow cube for a pretty killy trap combo. For a bit of extra spice however, add self destructor to the impaler, which will cause it to detonate before the cooldown of the raider's sword swing refreshes from destroying it in the first place, meaning they can't get out of the claw fast enough to escape the explosion. And for the final trap, we're going to talk about the backfire detonator. This one is a bit dirty, but one that I actually discovered by complete accident and absolutely love. It can be done with any trap using the self-destruct mod, but impalers are the recommendation due to their low cost. For this trap, you want to place a bolt trap designed to make the raider dodge, and then in a place the bolts will pass through, place an impaler with self-destruct. Rushing players will likely rush forward once the bolts fire. However, the bolts will destroy the impaler, causing a delayed explosion that can catch the raider by surprise, especially if they've previously not seen the impaler. 
bombs can also be a really good trigger for this, as you can place a self-destructing impaler where bombs will litter the floor when they get triggered. Many players will either grapple to the ceiling to dodge the bombs or back up, and then push forward as soon as they hear the bombs go off. However, at this point, the impaler will explode and catch them off guard. And that is it for today's video talking about the impaler and deep diving into the trap's use. I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks that will make that death trap a little bit more deadly. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the wastelands.